I said the bubble gun in action. I got the idea for the chattering teeth. I saw a magazine ad for a tooth garage. It was a big hit right from the start. And this is what it does. You may not know his name, but you certainly know his toys. Eddie Goldfarb is a 102-year-old toy maker who's created more than 800 toys, many of which are now iconic, including the Yakety Yak Chattering Teeth, the Bubble Gun, Stompers, and Kerplunk. The documentary short Eddie's World shares his incredible story. The film is directed by Lynn Goldfarb, who is Eddie's daughter, and she joins us live now this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have to start by asking, 102 years old, how's your father doing? He's doing really well, amazingly well. So uh, he just doesn't like getting up this early in the morning. That otherwise. makes sense. I don't blame sense. him there. <laughs> I wanted first to ask you, how did he get first interested in creating toys? Was this something you know that came from when he was a young boy, or did it develop over a period of time? Well, he was always interested in inventing, and he always knew he wanted to be an independent inventor. And when he was in the Navy, and oh, by the way, you know, he grew up in Chicago. Really? Oh, where? That's where he got his start. And when he was in the Navy, he volunteered for the Navy after Pearl Harbor was bombed. And he um, volunteered for submarine service as a radar technician. And on the submarine, he had a notebook and he was working on many kinds of ideas of what he might do when he got out of the Navy, and one of them was toys. So he was an independent yeah. toy maker. Mm -hmm. Tell us what the business was like back then. Did So did he come up with an idea and then take the idea to a company, or was he an employee of a company? No, exactly. He came up with an idea, and he sold it to a company. And that's what he always wanted to do. He wanted to stay independent. So he'd come up with an idea. He'd make a prototype. And then he would um, license it to a company who would then manufacture it. What drove him to create toys? Was it creativity? Was it seeing the joy in the kids? Or was it, you know, it just what was, the, what was the motivation behind maybe the first couple of toys before I'm sure he started getting some very lucrative uh, offers? You know, I mean, it was, I mean, it was kind of interesting. It was an area that he thought he could break into as an independent inventor. He knew that kids always would want toys. But he also believed in how toys would bring families together, you know, and he just came off the war. So that was important for him, that families come together. Sure. His first three toys, his first toy he made was a invented was a series of three toys, and they were educational toys. Mm. So that kind of fit into his mind, but actually... When he went out to sell them, he couldn't sell them. He said people weren't ready for educational toys then. Out, out of so, the 800 or so that he invented, what would you say are the, the one or two that he is most proud of? Well, I think one of the ones he's most famous for is this one, the chattering teeth. Oh, I love that one. Wind up chattering teeth. And um, I will make them wind. Yeah. And, uh, and that was actually the first toy he sold. So he sold it in 1949 when he was in Chicago. Uh, and then one of his other, several of the other most popular toys that I think he was always very excited about were the Stomper Cars, Kerplunk, and a toy called the Bubble Gun. And all of them are in the documentary. Oh, I watched cool. another documentary on toy makers, and they were saying how competitive the world of toy making had become, and that sometimes people were stealing other people's ideas. Did he find that in, in, in the industry, or was it maybe a little too early on for that to have happened, um, and maybe uh, notice it more so later on? Well, for him, he always felt like the toy industry was really almost like a big family. You know, at that point, as an independent inventor, he, there weren't that many of them. But the toy companies really valued their ideas, valued his ideas. And I think there was, at that time, much more trust. And of course, my father is an optimist. And he's a tremendous optimist. And he doesn't let little things bother him, even though, even if it's, you know, sometimes he'd be in a situation where a toy company 
might um, uh, have made a toy that was really his or had an idea about something that could have been uh, for anybody else a big deal. And he went and talked to them and they worked it out. Wow. Well, so he was I'm, I'm glad to hear that a famous into... toy maker is an optimist. That yes, feels very no, good to hear. Good uh, Lynn, this yeah. really sounds wonderful. Uh, again, the documentary is called Eddie's World. It is now streaming on PBS. There's the website, eddiesworld.net. Uh, you can follow them on social media as well. Uh, Lynn, thanks so much for your time this morning. Thanks, good luck. Lynn. Oh, thank you.